Hey guys, welcome back. This video is shifting gears a little bit from the typical content that I make about just making mom life easier, routines, meal planning, simplifying, all of those things. And we are gonna look at something that's a little bit more fun for parents and for kids. Recently, I discovered that my younger daughter did not have any hobbies and that she needed one. My older daughter was very good from the time she was really young at telling us exactly what she wanted to do so that we could try to help her accomplish those things. When she was about four or five, she told us that she wanted to learn to crochet. So we found a friend that knew how to crochet and was willing to teach her and she came over and had a nice long lesson with her and gave her some yarn and she started crocheting and kind of has been doing it ever since. Uh, she's not doing fancy projects or anything like that, but she enjoys it and she's able to make simple things on her own. Then when she was about five, she told us she wanted to learn to play violin. So I found a violin teacher and she started to play. And most recently, she was making bath bombs on her birthday because we were all very sick and had to basically cancel the rest of our plans. But my sister had gotten her a bath bomb making kit. So in between taking naps and being very sick, she and I made bath bombs. And by the end of the day, she said, mom, could I sell these? And my husband and I looked at each other and said, well, only about 50% of them are turning out, so this isn't the best idea for a business. But if you want to make something for a business, soap would be a really good idea. And then she proceeded to ask us just about every day when we were going to help her start her soap business, which we eventually did. My younger daughter, though, is four years old now, and when I ask her what things she's interested in doing, she says, I want to learn to crochet. And when I ask her what instrument she wants to play, she says, I want to play violin. And she had recently started telling my husband and I over and over, she wants to start her business because she wants to make money. And I just don't think I am ready to start another business with a child when starting a business with even a seven-year-old is a lot of work from the parents. And a four-year-old, I would basically be doing everything. She would just be doing the sales. So as my husband and I were talking about this and trying to figure out what we could do instead, we realized that the things that she was wanting from us with starting a business was she wanted to spend more time with us because I was spending a lot of time with the oldest daughter helping her making and selling her soaps. And every time I would sit down to do that with my oldest daughter, she would say, I want to do this with you. I want to spend time with you. How come you don't spend time with me? Even though we do spend time together, it isn't a carved out time that we work on every week together on a specific project. And we also just realized that she didn't have any hobbies that were her own. Instead, she would look at her older sister, think about how cool that she thought her older sister was and decide that she wanted to be just like her. So I realized that I needed to help her find a hobby that was hers, something that she could take ownership of, something she could get really good at, because sometimes she does help us make soap, but she's definitely in the gopher role. She does the things that my older daughter asks her to do, and she's happy to do that because she wants to help. But I think she needed something that she could be really good at, and then she could teach my older daughter to do as well. So I decided to put together this video to help any of you who have realized that your children need a hobby as well and help you go through the steps for finding a good hobby that also won't just add a lot of clutter to your home or have them spending more time in front of media. So before we get into this, how do you know if your kid needs a hobby? One way you know that they need a hobby is if they are bored, if they are following you around all the time, unsure how to spend their time, they probably need a hobby. I would say this applies to kids that are maybe three or four and up because obviously younger children are going to be with you most of the time. But as a child gets older, we as parents want to give them independence and we want to give them confidence that comes from learning something and being able to do it well and then being able to do it eventually on your own. Now this next way to know if your child needs a hobby is kind of opposite of what I just said, but hear me out. I am home with my kids all the time, but one of my children was still telling me that she wanted to spend more time with me. And I think in our situation, it is because we have a six month old, so I spend a lot of time feeding him and caring for him. And I also have a seven year old who, as I mentioned before, has some hobbies. So the soap making, she's able to do most of the process, but I still need to be present and be around in case something goes on that she needs help with. Also with her violin playing, she is often able to practice on her own. She's pretty competent with that. But sometimes if there's tricky counting 
or if she's just having a hard day and needs a little support, she will ask me to sit with her and I will help her get through the practicing process. But my now middle child and I don't have any specific times to spend together every day. And she had actually started telling me right before we decided she needed a hobby that she wanted to spend an entire day with just her and mommy. And I started asking her questions about why she felt this way. And I realized that I needed to carve out some time every day or even once a week and have just her and I time concentrated with no one else that I'm trying to tend to during that time. A third way you can tell if your child needs a hobby is if every time you get together with friends and they see the cool things that their friends are doing, they say, I want to do that because that means that they don't have something that is theirs and so they are just trying to do whatever their friends are doing that might be cool at that moment. And the fourth way you can tell if your child needs a hobby is if they are spending too much time on media. Now in our house, we really don't do media. Every once in a while, the kids will watch a YouTube video if there is something that we are trying to teach them or that they're interested in learning about and they FaceTime with grandparents. But other than that, our kids don't have a lot of media time. But if you're finding that all your child wants to do when they have free time is sit and consume media, then they probably need something else to occupy their time with. I had also noticed this with my daughter before we decided to find her a hobby. She would ask me over and over again to watch YouTube videos about a certain topic because she was interested in learning about it. But even educational YouTube videos, I don't think should be consumed all the time. It's just not best for children to be in front of a screen. So I had noticed this with her as well, that she just wanted to kind of zone out a little bit and learn about something, but it's still not the same as learning about something by actually doing it. And the fifth way you can tell if your child needs a hobby is when you are around other people. If other people ask your child what is going on in their life and they say, I don't know, that probably means they don't have something that they are passionate about. And we had noticed this also with our younger daughter. If people asked my older daughter, what is she doing? She could tell them all about her soap. She could tell them about her violin if she wants to. She would sometimes tell them what crochet project she was working on. And when people would ask our younger daughter, she would say, well, I'm crocheting too. And I'm going to start a business too. It was never anything that was uniquely hers. And as a little side note here, I think it is important when you are considering a hobby for your child that it is something that is uniquely theirs because we have a lot of hobbies as a family. We love skiing together in the winter. We love backpacking together in the summer. Now those are great hobbies and they're things that our entire family loves and gets excited about when we are preparing to do one of those things, but they aren't things that a specific child can take ownership of and be proud of and tell other people about or even do on a weekly basis or when they have free time of their own. So make sure as you are choosing this hobby that it's something that they can commit time to on a consistent basis, either weekly or daily or at some regular interval so that they can work on this skill and get better at it. All right, let's get into the steps we took in helping our daughter find a hobby. The easiest way to start is just by looking at how they currently spend their time when they have free time and seeing if there is something they are drawn to that you can just expand on and make it more of a hobby for them. So for my daughter, she had been every time she had the opportunity, every time she had chosen a bonus when she got her chores done. And anytime I said, okay, mommy has 20 minutes of so what do you want to do with that time? She would choose watercoloring. And watercoloring can be a great hobby. It really doesn't take up too much extra space. The supplies are very inexpensive and it's something that many children love. The second step is doing some research. If they already have something that they love doing and love spending their time on, do some research for how to help them develop this into a full hobby. Or if they don't have something that they already love, do some research for ideas. And sometimes it's good to do the research either way. For example, in my daughter's situation, I didn't know if she truly just loved watercoloring and would do that no matter what, or if she had just started watercoloring because it was something that we already had and she didn't know that there were any other options. Now, when you start the research journey, I highly recommend that you do this alone at first because there are many different blog posts out there with 50 or 100 hobby ideas for kids and a lot of those hobby ideas involve bringing extra chunk for lack of a better term into your house. I saw it several times listed on different hobby idea lists, collecting things as a hobby. 
and I'm sure that could be a very nice hobby, but for this minimalist mom, that is not a hobby I want to encourage in my children. So I looked at the lists, and then I compiled my own of minimalist friendly hobby ideas for my kids. And I'm going to get the blog post together that will go with this video before I post this video. So check the link in the description down below and I will have some minimalist friendly hobby ideas on that list. But here are a couple ideas to get you started. One is baking. Another is cooking, both of which are really awesome because they're developing important life skills. And they're also things you can do together with your child on a daily basis. Another great thing about those ideas is that they're consumable, so they're not bringing extra junk into your house that you then have to store. And I personally love hobbies like that. Another great hobby idea along this line is gardening. A lot of children love playing in the dirt, love helping out in the garden, and it's not things that you have to buy that don't serve another purpose. Anything that you buy for gardening is going to give you more food, which helps you cut down on grocery costs, and it's a lot of fun to spend time with your children in the garden. I added painting to our list because that is what I saw come up a lot and something that my daughter did enjoy already. And something that goes kind of along with the painting, but is something I personally never would have thought of, is woodworking with your children. Photography can be another great idea that doesn't involve too much equipment, and often most people have an older camera already hanging around their house that they could let their children use while they're learning. Another thing I put on our list is music lessons with mommy, because I don't really want to start music lessons with a teacher until they're at least five. It's just a lot of work to do music lessons with a young child. It involves a lot of time for me when they're very young but I know how to play the piano and it's something that I could start casually teaching her without it having to be a big stress or a big commitment. She's only four, so if we don't do a lesson every week, it's not a big deal. And if she doesn't practice every single day, again, it's not a big deal, especially if I'm the teacher and I'm not paying someone else to do this. Another thing I put on my daughter's list is yarn activities, whether that be crocheting, knitting, or finger knitting. It's something that we already have a lot of the supplies for because my older daughter crochets, and it would be very easy for her to begin doing something like that as well. Now the next step is letting your child decide. So what I did is I sat down with my daughter and I explained to her, you aren't quite old enough to start a business. When you are seven, like your sister, I will help you start a business as well. But at this point, it just isn't something that mommy has time for. But let's figure out a hobby that we can do together every single week at least. I will put aside some time and we will have just mommy and you time. And her eyes lit up and she was so excited about that idea. Then I read her the list of ideas that I had already created, so I'm not showing her just anything and everything that's on the internet for kids' hobby ideas, but showing her the smaller list of hobbies that I already approve of. And everything that I said, she would say, okay, mm -hmm, that sounds nice. And then when I would get to a hobby that piqued her interest, she would get the biggest smile on her face and her eyes would get big and she would say, oh, I want to do that. So every time she did that, I would make a smaller list and there were about four or five things that we had on that smaller list and then we narrowed it down from there. But ultimately, I let it be her decision. I let her decide what is something that she would like to spend her time doing. So the small list that she had narrowed her choices down to was making backpacking food. And that was a hobby idea that my husband came up with because we love backpacking. He's been wanting to learn to dehydrate and make his own backpacking meals. And he said, that's something really fun that I could do with her together. And she loved that idea. She absolutely loves backpacking. A lot of her Christmas list is backpacking gear. So she was very excited about that idea. Another thing she added to her shortlist was painting. So I found out that she really does enjoy painting and it wasn't just that that was the only thing available to her. So this is a good test to have the full list but also have mixed in there things that you think that they might enjoy and you will find out whether they truly enjoy those things or if they've just been doing them because there's nothing else to do. Music lessons was another thing that she pulled out and said that she would like to do. Now, this is something that we have sat down and done a couple of times, but as I suspected for a four-year-old, it's not something that she wants to practice every single day. And that's totally fine with me. I'm just glad that I didn't invest in lessons from somebody else for this because it's really easy to do it when she's interested and then not when she's not. 
she wanted to do more yarn crafts just like her sister and I kind of expected that because they really enjoy crocheting and things like that together. And the last thing she put on her short list was building things and woodworking, which again, I never would have even considered if I hadn't looked at these lists. So I think doing the research is really important to see what might be of interest to your child. And I think one of the things that she liked about building things is we kind of explained to her, at first she said, what is that? And we told her it's things like building bird houses or building dog houses, building little things maybe for animals or things that we need around the house. And then after you're done building it, you can paint it. And she just really liked that idea. She loved the idea of using tools and maybe getting some tools for herself. And she loved the idea of painting the finished product. And that reminds me of something else that I had noticed before I realized she needed a hobby is my girls love giving gifts to people and they love making gifts for people. So often with the crocheting, they will make things for their friends. They'll make little bookmarks out of chains or they will make little blankets for their friends' dolls and they will wrap them up and give it to them. And now with my older daughter's soap business, when she wants to give a gift, like to me for my birthday, she gave me one of her soaps. She had something that she could give and she had the ability to do that independently of asking me to help her get a birthday gift for me. And my younger daughter really was getting frustrated because she didn't have the money to go buy a gift for somebody and she couldn't make something good enough to create the gift. She could do a little bit of the crocheting, but not quite as much as my older daughter can. So we explained to her that with painting and with building and things like that, you have a product when you are done. And if you want to give your grandparents a Christmas present or something like that, you could give them a birdhouse. You could give your aunts and uncles a birdhouse or things like that. And she loved that idea. The thing that I love about the idea of giving gifts with your hobby is then you don't have a million little birdhouses sitting in your garage, but you can actually give those away or even sell them as my older daughter is doing with her soaps. And then it doesn't just leave the hobby projects around your house indefinitely. So I hope this video helped you and your child come up with some good hobby ideas or at least figure out the process for coming up with a hobby. Hobbies are so great for kids because it's not only something that they just spend their time doing, but if you choose a good hobby, they will actually be learning a skill that they can take with them through their whole life. And even if this hobby isn't the one that sticks with them forever and is something that they do well into old age, it is still going to teach them the lesson of how to learn something and how to get better at something, which that skill can be applied to anything in life. And as we're getting close to Christmas time in the end of the year, hobbies are also wonderful because you can gift hobby supplies to your children, or you can even gift hobby ideas to your children. My sister had given my daughter that bath bomb kit and that kind of sparked her interest in creating bath products. And when you gift these things, it's not just toys that are going to end up everywhere. They are supplies that will be used over and over again. And I've also found that once my children have a hobby, they are much more inclined to declutter their own space and ask for my help in doing that as well. Because I've explained to them, if we have more space, we have more room for the things that we actually want to do, our hobbies. And if we get rid of some of these toys and some of this junk around our room, we can sell it and then have more money. And when we aren't spending so much time cleaning up our room, we can spend more time on our hobbies hobbies and the things that we really enjoy. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment down below with any other minimalist hobby ideas that you have for your kids. And also let me know if this video helped you and your child figure out a hobby and tell me which hobby you are going to go with. I'm Cassie with makingtimefairgiggles.com and I make videos all about simplifying mom life through routines, meal planning, budgeting, and decluttering. So if that sounds like something you would be into, please subscribe down below because I would love to see you on the next video.